Like we do have a gun violence problem in this country and it's gang violence, right? It's, it's gangs. It's people in Chicago and St. Louis, uh, shooting each other. Um, very often, you know, black people, frankly, and the Democrats don't want to do anything about that. Look at San Francisco and LA. They've legalized crime, uh, property crime. You can't even get arrested if you go and smash someone's window and, and take a purse or an iPhone. You know, they're, they're light on crime. Uh, what they mean by gun control is disarming you and me. You know, I'm sure occasionally a uh, ghost gun, uh, a homemade firearm is used in crime, but it's pretty rare. Okay, pretty rare. Usually it's just black market handguns. Mm -hmm. um, what they do when they ban things like ghost guns, uh, when they ban things like pistol braces, which they're trying to do, that's all about disarming law-abiding people like you and me. Uh, that's, that's what it's about, right? They care that we can't have guns to defend ourselves. They don't like the Second Amendment. It, frankly, blocks a lot of their plans for us. That was far-right Arizona Senate candidate Blake Masters blaming America's epidemic of mass shootings on black people. Masters said this in a radio interview this week, where, in addition to his racist scapegoating of the black community, Masters also argued that Democrats are letting gun violence happen so that they can disarm the country. Yikes. Unfortunately, using black communities as scapegoats has a long history in our country's gun violence debate. By absolving white communities like his own of responsibility for mass violence, Masters makes America's gun violence epidemic someone else's problem. And by blaming black communities, Republicans hijack the gun debate. In Blake Masters' worldview, the answer to gun violence isn't gun control, it's mass incarceration. If that sounds a little authoritarian to you, it shouldn't surprise you that Blake Masters has authoritarianism in his political roots. Masters bears the Donald Trump seal of approval, and his largest shadow funder is right-wing tech supervillain Peter Thiel, who once remarked that he no longer believed in democracy. Trump and Thiel have groomed Masters to be the next big MAGA hit. So far, it's working. And unlike cranks like Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, Blake Masters isn't playing up his Trumpy credentials for the camera. Masters is a true believer in the kind of right-wing dream state where blaming black people for the mass shootings of white supremacists is just common sense. And this isn't the first time that Masters has broadcast his racist and misogynistic views for all to hear. Masters has been a prominent marketer of white replacement theory. The same racist conspiracy theory that led a white gunman in New York to target black shoppers in a rampage that left 10 people dead. He's also called for states to ban birth control and contraception. He said that the right to privacy was wrongly decided by the Supreme Court. In return, Donald Trump labeled this mishmash of madness a great modern-day thinker. But if Masters is so crazy, how is he still running for Senate? The American people can thank the Citizens United decision for that. Now that bored billionaires like Peter Thiel can fund Senate candidates as if they were his own living, breathing puppets, candidates like Blake Masters don't need money from regular people like you and me. Masters is a prime example of how completely Republicans have removed voters from the actual democratic process. Masters knows most Americans don't agree with him. He also doesn't care. He doesn't need their money, and with Republicans enacting sweeping voter suppression laws nationwide, Republicans like Masters won't need their votes either. That explains Masters' willingness to spout his racism everywhere he can, but not Republicans' willingness to keep buying it.